Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a two pipe fan cool unit. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we're working on a two pipe fan cool unit with emergency electric heat. I did troubleshoot this about a week ago and we realized that we have two bad electric heaters. These are 120 volt heaters and the wait time on them was about six weeks and they need heaters now. There is a spare unit in a mechanical room that I'm gonna go check out that runs off 208. So what happened is that an electrician ran us 208. Unfortunately, this doesn't exactly fit into the unit where there's actually space. So that's a problem, but for now, let's go downstairs to the mechanical room and pull those old heaters out. We're gonna have to test them. All right, so we're in the mechanical room right now. It's a large HVAC unit. This is a four pipe fan coil unit. There's heating and cooling all year round. We've got a spare unit here. This runs off 208 as far as the heaters. And we got four of them here, four electric heat strips. So luckily I'm able to use these, but I was actually here during the last visit and I pulled out four heaters out of this unit right here. And nobody knows where it is. So I gotta waste a little bit more extra more time now and figure out if these heaters are even good or not. We're gonna have to do some testing as well before I install that. So let's go ahead and take this out. The screws are on the other end. All right. Let's see, the heaters are these screws here. Let's take them out. At this point, I might as well just pull all four of them out. I have them as spares. All right, so here's some power wires coming in. I actually need an extension. Maybe I could just reuse this. You got the correct wire size. So you know what? Let's cut that up. I'm going to take that and reuse it. That's that. And we got two wires here coming off the heat relay that go to one side of the heater. So we could get rid of that. Keep that together. Then, so we get 120 going through this side. which is this wire, the red one we cut. And then the other side, I got two white wires, comes in through here, which goes to the black wire we cut. So, we can take that out. Actually, we're gonna have to cut it like this. So these two heaters are free. Next two power wires, next two power wires. Cedars look pretty good actually. The coils on them. Let's just pull these wires out. Two heaters. Let's just grab the next two and make our way to the room. All right, so I'm in the hallway. It's a two pole breaker, right? It's a two pole breaker, 30 amp. It's the only one that shows is right here for room 806, but I think he just put it here because that's the only one that had space. We're really in 802, but nowhere else is there a two pole breaker guys i turned this on and this thing exploded i just heard a huge pop i don't know if that thing is grounded or what i don't want to deal with this 
and see what's going on, but I don't want to be responsible for somebody else's work. And you can look here, there's no space to even get anything in here. There's no knockouts or anything to get the new power in. So whatever he ran isn't even good. There's a knockout right here. And this cover was open. He would have seen clearly, all right, we're going to have to come around this way to get in there. But I don't know if he's too bright at the same time. I turned on that brick and I think it exploded. So he might not be a good electrician either. So let's get to it. We're gonna have to pull this down and we're gonna have to take out the fan motor assembly. We'll pull that out and then we got access to the heaters. All right, so the heaters are behind here. We got two screws here and two screws on that edge and then we can pull this down. I wonder, do I have to actually disconnect the wires for the motor? Got a little bit of slack. Maybe if I pull, take out this little bracket and loosen this up, we can just kind of tilt it to the side. Kind of got this pipe in the way. Maybe we can pull it towards this way. Let's see. Okay. Keep all these screws separated. Oh, they're the same. Careful. Okay. There's the heaters. Gotta hold this motor somehow. Make sure I'm not hitting anything. Right there. Perfect. Got access to the heaters now. Alright. One wire. And then on the bottom, I got this one. One. Take off the screws on the bottom and these heaters will be free. One. Two. Heater one. Alright. Let's get the next one. test them just like this as far as this temperature sensor it's actually good it got continuity so <laughs> all right just to show you guys i'm gonna put it on ohms and continuity i'm gonna check across this switch we're gonna want to read continuity You hear the beep, we have it. And then across the heater, the heater itself. Across the heater, we have 38 ohms on the meter. All right, and for the next one, I'll double check that. Got continuity. 
across this, the switch and then the heater itself 38.9 ohms all right This way. And one this way. Right. What happened? I got this in place, I wired them. But I'm gonna disconnect this side from the relay so I can put power to one side. And then I'm gonna disconnect this one from here so we could power it up 208 directly and test it. I got a guy to help me just to see if there's power. You have something? Uh, five one. Five one? Yeah, I see one. Okay. I'm gonna turn it off. Now I'm gonna check the next heater. Okay? Five three. Five three? Perfect. Turning off the power. All right, so this is what I was doing. I was checking amps. I just directly connected it like this, just for now to test, to make sure that these heaters are good. They are both pulling amps. I thought about it and I made a trip to the truck. I'm gonna install this two pole relay with a 120 volt coil, so these are the two coil wires that goes on the coil. And then we put these two wires on one leg and then these two wires on the other leg. And when this coil energizes, the contactor will close and it'll send 208 directly from these two wires to these two sets of wires as there are two heaters. So what's going on is that the sheetrock guys came and they took out the screws for the sheetrock that they put up where the electrician ran the power and more than likely they put a, a screw <laughs> into the wire so once they took that out power was back online and one of the guys helped me just to, to read the amps because you don't want to run these heaters for long when there's no fan blowing on it it's going to go off on the temperature sensor then it get too hot fan must be blowing but i did that just as a test so as of right now i'm going to go ahead and mount this contactor and wire everything up All right, one side of the contact is wired and the coil. Let's go ahead and put this back. And then we can deal with running the power here. Actually picked up a handy box and we're gonna extend it. This fan, the shaft is freaking so tight. This thing is probably bad. Turn the switch on, how did this thing go bad? Heat. I hear the relay kind of kicked in. Motor's humming. A contactor pulled in. This motor is humming. Oh man, I got more problems here. All right, so they had some sort of motor in stock. Hopefully that thing actually fits. Let's go ahead and, and take this out. I wonder, can I take off the screw on the bottom and just like pull this motor out? Or I might need to bring the whole plate down. Might be able to just do it just like this. Yeah, I think I'll might be able to do it. 
just like this. We got a friend in here. Oh man, that thing is giant. All right. These little mounts on it. <laughs> the only thing is, it didn't come with a capacitor. Probably gonna have to use this old one. Just threw the bug over there. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> right, it's like a little clip. These are super, super simple. Let's loosen that up. This thing kind of just like pulls out. I have to smack this out. It's a plastic blade, so I'm kind of just gonna put it in a place and kind of just smack it out a bit. It's moving. Okay. Goes this way, and we'll do the same for this one. A lot of dirt came out of there. Just be careful not to destroy this thing. Let's take out the clip. Whenever you're pulling out a blade, you honestly should sand down the tip of the shaft and then try to pull it out. No damage. Should always sand down the shaft as well. And this can actually go in one way because there's, there's a flat part here. All right, so this is a five microfarad capacitor and we have 4.8 microfarads that's pretty good I guess we could use it okay could run it through the cap and wire it Put a little bit of tape around the conductors just to be safe because it is a metal cap. Let's just fit this onto, onto the mount. I believe it's called a resilient mount. Okay, that's like that, spin it. No friction. Oh yeah, by the way, I put the little clips back in. And now let me Get this on there. My camera died, so I wasn't able to record the rest, but we put this back in. I wired everything. Let's go ahead and test. Let's see what's going on. All right, I hear the air. Nice. All right, so the last piece of the puzzle, we're gonna have to extend this right here. It would fit. If only we had a knockout here, which we don't. This pipe is in the way here. We gotta run it in to right there. So I'm gonna put an extension and put it through this box. All right, so I added an extension to this. Let's go ahead and get that into the unit. All right, guys, power is ran. Everything's wired up. It's time to close up this unit and do a final test. All 
All right, got all the power on right now. We're pulling zero amps. I got my meter across one of the heating wires. Let's go ahead and turn the thermostat on heat. I heard the contactor plunge in and the fan started. All right. Got 4.9 amps on this one. And we got 4.9 amps on this one. Let's let this unit run and check temperatures. All right guys, 86.5 degrees and climbing. All right guys, everything's looking good. Unfortunately, this unit does not have a cover for the control panel and it's nowhere in the ceiling. Go figure. But anyways, we got this done. It was actually my idea to have an electrician run 208 volts as we had 208 volt spare heaters. And I would just switch up the wiring a little bit just so we can have heat right now instead of waiting for the 120 volt heaters. But anyways, we're just gonna do a little further inspection on this unit. We're gonna run it, we have heat. We don't have the best temperatures and I actually hear a little bit of water passing through. So this actuator right here, it's either the actuator is not fully closing or the valve is bad and it would have to be replaced. But we do have heat at almost 90 degrees, so it will help the customer. But if you want better heat, we're gonna have to do a little further work and troubleshoot this actuator, possibly change it. What I would do is change it and see if it fully closes, maybe the spring got weak. If water is still passing through, the valve would need to be replaced. But as of right now, we got this done. We installed the heaters, we did some wiring, and we changed the fan motor. And now everything is back to normal, except for this little issue right here. But anyways, we're gonna wrap this one up here. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. I'll catch you all next time. Thank you.